Okay, welcome to episode two of my React 2021 series. Um, for the rest of this series, I'm going to be working from one single GitHub repo. So the link to this is down in the description, and there's going to be a branch for each one of the episodes. So the main branch is the starter code that I had at the end of my introduction. That's basically just the default create Re React app install. Once that's done from that point on, this will be the finished code from each of the episodes. So just switch to episode two, and that is the code at the end of episode two. All right, so jumping back into uh, VS Code, we have the app from the first one. Um, I wanted to just sort of point out the git ignore folder here, things that you won't see in the repos. Um, most of all is this, the production build. So that folder is not going to be there. You will have to, if you clone the repo, you're not going to get node modules. You're not going to get the build folder. So you're still going to have to do the NPM install or, or yarn install to get all of the dependencies installed. And then after that, you're going to have to run the build command to get the build folder generated for yourself. Okay. You will get the public and the source folders. All right, so let's jump into the source. And what I want to do is I want to strip some of this stuff out. I'm going to go back to bare bones with the stuff that you only absolutely need. So I can remove the report web vitals, and that means I can remove this stuff down here as well. So we get rid of that. Um, I'm going to remove React Strict Mode. Now, I don't recommend that you do this, but just to show you that you can, I'm trying to minimize what I've got. I could at this point remove index.css. We could get rid of that. Uh, all that's in it right now is just this, some default styles for the body. And if you're in code, a different font. Uh, for the app, I'm going to shrink this down even more. I'm going to get rid of the text align. I'm just going to change it to a background color, min height, and a font color. And we're going to get rid of everything else. And what the heck, we'll put in uh, some default padding around the whole thing. So two REM all the way around. Then I'm just going to strip out everything else that's inside this file. So there's nothing else down to absolute bare bones. So that's our app CSS and the index CSS was just this. All right, so we've minimized our CSS. We've stripped out um, code that we didn't need here, the import that we didn't need here. I'm going to go into the app component now and I will strip that down. I don't care about this logo. I'm not going to be using that. I will keep the app.css, but I'm going to remove everything except for that one div tag. All of that gone. Okay, so I could put some text here so we will see it if I start up the dev server. So we'll say yarn start to bring up our dev server. There we go. And there it is. Hello world. So we've got the color, we've got the font, we've got the text color set to white, and that's all we have. There's nothing else here. So we'll be just working with this. What I want to do is I want to sort of walk through how it is that we can use JSX to build our apps. So let's jump back in here. Now this right here is an object. It looks like HTML, but it's not HTML. And that's something about everything that you're going to build inside of React. You can, it is possible to use the react.createElement method and we can build those virtual DOM objects up that way, but it's much easier to build it this way with stuff that looks like HTML. If I jump back to the React website on the home page here, you can even see it. You can toggle between it. Here is a class component. So this is the name of the class. We're extending react.component. There's a render method inside the class and what it returns, this is the content. So there's a div with hello and another piece of text. 
If I convert that back to the regular methods, what it does is calls the create element method. It's a div with no attributes. This is the text. All this together, that's the text inside of the div. And we call react-dom.render. And hello message is this thing. That's what we're building. We're passing in name is Taylor. So this.props.name would be Taylor. However, doing it this way with JSX is just, it's much easier to read. I honestly have never met anybody who prefers the create element way of doing this. So this is what we're going to do right now. You will rarely have one single line. If you do, just like any other function, if I was writing a function in any JavaScript file, my return value, I can put what I want to return on the same line, and that's fine. I can't put it on the next line like this because the automatic semicolon injection that JavaScript does is going to want to stick a semicolon right here. So you're returning undefined. If you want to return something here, what you need to do is you need to wrap this in a set of parentheses to say, I'm returning this expression. If I put a curly brace here, I'd be returning an object. I don't want to return an object. Well, I do, but I want to return a bunch of objects. This is JSX code, which is actually an object. We're returning an object from our app component. This gets converted into an object by Babel. Babel understands how to read the JSX and turn it into ES5 code. So we're going to be writing our stuff like this. And for the most part, we will be doing this. We'll be saying, here's the expression that I want. I want to have a div. And then inside of that, maybe I want to have an H1 element with my text inside of that. All right, so I save it. This is my expression. I've got an object with an object inside of it. And this should be updated now. There it is. Hello world. Okay. So we have this rendering. A few of the rules for JSX. Number one rule is that you can only have one top level element. If I do this, if I try to create another div, at this level. You can see I'm getting all the red squigglies. It's telling me that I'm doing something wrong. In here, this is the same error message I'm getting in my console. Let me zoom in a little bit. Adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. And it's talking about something called a JSS, JSX fragment, which we're going to use in just a moment. There can only be one top level element. I can come in here and say, you know what, I'm going to stick a main element around this. That's going to work. We're back to everything's fine. But you don't always want to add extra HTML. And this is that fragment, React fragment, JSX fragment that they were talking about. Just the angle brackets themselves. So a starting set of angle brackets and then a closing one, the slash in between them. Same idea. It doesn't add any extra HTML onto the page. It just creates this container that I can use. So we're allowed to use that anywhere throughout our code. And then that can be the top level element for the component that we're building. The other one is we have to always remember that this is JavaScript. So I can't use the word class inside of here. And I'm getting prompted here. Do we want to use class name? Yeah, because in JavaScript, when you're assigning a CSS class to something, to a DOM element, class name is the actual property that we use. So we would say class name equals, and let's call it hello. I'll save that. I'm going to open up my app.css. Inside of here, I'll create a class called hello. And we'll set our color to gold. Okay, so the class is defined. Our CSS class here, hello, being assigned to class name. So we should see gold text. And there it is. 
So this has had the CSS class name applied to the H1 element. Now there's a few of these properties like this, but basically it's just the JavaScript properties. If there's a JavaScript property like with an input element and a label, if you're creating an, a label and it's going to be attached to some input, we've got the ID of the input like that. Here, if you want to attach the label to the input, in HTML, I would write four. I can't use four here because four is something else in JavaScript. So we have to say HTML four. No errors, everything's fine. Okay, we don't need these. I'll come back to doing forms and events a little bit later in another video. But this is the one that you're going to most often run into. So we've got class name is app, class name is hello. If you want to put a variable here, because this is JavaScript, this is JSX, so we're allowed to insert things. Let's create a variable up here called app style, and it's going to be equal to the string app. I want to use this variable inside of here. Instead of this right here, I want to put that variable app style. Now, if I do this, if I just leave it like that, I've lost those the style for app. If I look inside the HTML, we'll see the problem is that the div has the class app style, which was my variable name. If I want to actually use a variable, I have to get rid of the quotation marks and replace that with curly braces like this. If you want to put some styles instead of the class name hello, I'm going to put an expression in here. So I use the curly braces. But if I want to pass in a style object inside of here, it is an object. So the first set of curly braces say, this is going to be an expression in my JSX. This is the actual object where I can say color is going to be, and you have to write it the same way you would in JavaScript, which means quotation marks around that value like that. And there we go. So my div is back to having app and the one inside style color gold. So that's all working fine. Everything's working well there as expected. So at this point, I would just encourage you to experiment with this. Try creating variables, embedding them inside of here. Try out the React fragments. Try writing different pieces of HTML as JSX just to get used to the syntax. Once you're done that, you're good. In the next video, we're going to move on to building components. So this is a component right here. You can see function app, that's my component, and we are exporting it. This is probably the biggest source of errors when you're writing your React is forgetting to do the export. Expect that you will do that several times while you're learning to write React. But this is going to be in the next video. We're going to talk about components. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the difference between functional and class-based components, uh, but mostly we're going to focus on the functional ones. All right, so hope that all made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.